What's good you guys, it's Lifestyle from LifestyleDidIt.com and in today's video we're going to be going over why I personally like to EQ in mono and why it can do wonderful things for your mix. Let's get straight into it. Alright, so I always speak about mixing in mono and it truly is one of the best things you could do and a lot of engineers will tell you to mix in mono because it can help you get better at EQing and really learn what's clashing in your mix and help you open it up. The easiest way to get your mix to go into mono in FL is literally right here. You have your stereo width knob. You could go to the right to fully merge it into one or you could go over to the left to widen the mix out. Today we're going to be going all the way to the right to merge it. You can use plugins like S1 from Waves if you want to throw it in mono that way, but this works fine. Let me show you what it sounds like. So this is normal. And if we throw it in mono, everything's merged. What we're going to do today is focus on EQ, mostly with all of the lead elements. I'm not going to do the drums, but I'm going to show you how we can open up all of these pads and vocals so they're not clashing with each other. So what I'm going to do is just solo all of them. So normal, this is what it would sound like. So in stereo, it sounds pretty good. I can still hear there's a bit of clashing, but you won't really be able to hear it too much when it's completely in stereo. Now, if we put it in mono, like let's say we're listening on a phone or just one speaker, this is what it would sound like. And you could hear, especially on this lead right here, we can't really hear that piano too much. It's very buried. There's a lot of like 500 hertz buildup in all of them together that is kind of just hiding it and I wanna open it up. So all I'm gonna do is go ahead and put this bass in here. Now you could really hear it. There's a lot of clashing going on. So let's turn the bass down a little bit. And I'm going to start EQing certain elements. So I'm gonna start with this piano you hear. And we're gonna do it all together. So let's go back. I'm gonna take the bass out for right now and I'm gonna go into this lead. Get an EQ. Now I know that bass is gonna take up a lot of that low end. So I don't need that low end in this piano. All right, next I'm gonna listen to this bell. A lot of buildup in like that 300 area to five, the lower mid range. So let's just cut some of this out. It's already sounding better, this before and after. It's getting cleaner. Let's go over to the bells. Bells don't need that low end either. These bells literally don't even have it, so I'm gonna just cut it out. I'm gonna actually go pretty high on these. And I hear a bit of resonance somewhere, so I'm gonna go hunt for it. All right, I'm gonna cut a tiny bit more out on this piano. Just for preference, I don't really like how it was sounding. All right, this vocal has a bit of EQ on it already. I guess I forgot to take it off. And mainly, I'm pretty sure it just has a lot of high end in it. Yeah, that I was hiding. So that's why I left it on. So for this, I'm gonna cut out really a lot of low end. This is mainly just supposed to be an accent in the back of the beat. I don't really want it to be up front because there is gonna obviously be an artist on this beat. So I'm gonna just get rid of some of this mid range in it. you'll see we haven't done any additive EQ yet. All of this is subtractive EQ. Okay, it's sounding good. Let's go to this next bell. Okay, here it's pretty much just a high bell. What we're gonna do is just boost uh, some high end in it and get rid of some low end. So let's go back. Let's get rid of some low end because there's not really anything in it. I just use this as another accent. So I'm just gonna keep it like that. Just really want it to be bright. And then the last one is this lead over here. And you can see that can cause a lot of buildup. So we need to go EQ that. And it's another backing one as well. So let's go hunt for where it sounds bad. This one's definitely clashing with this lead. So I'm gonna solo these two together. I'm gonna go figure out where they're clashing. And 
in on this lead, I'm gonna cut out a little bit more, probably of this 200 area. Just a lot of buildup in there. Yeah, let's go do it like this. And then if we bring our bass back in lightly, it's blending a lot better. So now let me show you what happens when we flip it back in to stereo. All right, so before the processing in mono, here's what it sounded like. Now in mono with processing. out of mono in stereo with processing. So you'll see that the mix got much wider. It was more open. There wasn't a lot of clashing going. And then when we flip back to stereo, it really just branched itself out. And we didn't even do any panning. It really just spread itself out because there's no more clashing. So we're hearing it different. We didn't do any type of panning. We're just no longer hearing clashing happening. And it sounds like the mix opens up a lot more. So that's why you want to EQ in mono. And that's why I do it all the time. And it works wonders. If you guys did like this video, leave a thumbs up. You can follow me on all social medias at Lifestyle Did It. Make sure to hit my site, lifestyledidit.com for everything else. Other than that, subscribe to your boy. Push notifications. Thanks.